Dear Mr. President, I am deeply honored to have been asked for my advice as you assume the awesome burdens of your new office. I can offer several rules of thumb, which I believe time and experience have proven sound. Act boldly in the beginning. The public has a short attention span, and it will make them forget the accomplishments of your predecessor and impress them with your vigor. Make your first priority the protection of your power. Without it, you are useless. Appear steadfast, but be flexible. Remember, some of God's greatest gifts are broken campaign promises. A playful paraphrase of words written in the year 1513 by a cashiered civil servant in Florence, Italy. What he actually wrote became one of the most hotly debated, deeply disturbing and important books of Western civilization. To some, it was a veritable guidebook for tyrants and totalitarians. Mussolini loved it. Marxists recognized a fellow revolutionary. To others, it paved the way for ethnic and religious toleration, individual rights and modern democracies. But, fairly or unfairly, it has caused his name, Machiavelli, to ring through the centuries as a synonym for evil. I compare fortune to one of those violent rivers which, when they are enraged, flood the plains, tear down trees and buildings. Everyone flees before them. Everybody yields to their impetus. There is no possibility of resistance. Yet although such is their nature, one may still take precautions when they are flowing quietly building dams and dikes to control them in flood time. So it is with fortune. Rivers are not to be trusted. Neither are men. But both can often be controlled, given intelligence and power, and the willingness to get your hands dirty. Machiavelli is the first political thinker of the Christian era who systematically analyzed the requirements of power and survival. The Prince is a book about power. Political power at a time of city-states or principalities, ruled by men called princes. It amounts to 26 short chapters of analysis and opinion that range from the classification of government to advice on selecting staff. It was written to shock and re-educate its reader, and it still manages to do so to challenge the political pieties of its day and explain to princes and prince wannabes how the game is really played. It tells the prince that before anything else, he must know how to fight. He must learn to be ruthless and cruel, to lie, break his word, and be ready to violate both morals and religious principles when needed. Though it also stresses the need to appear compassionate, moral, and devout. Some say Machiavelli invented modern politics. And when we read The Prince, we can see today's headlines. I think in many ways that it's a great book because it is a mirror for Machiavelli's own time and because it does continue to disturb, provoke, and make us think anew and see in what way it does relate to our own time. And we keep asking questions of it. It was Machiavelli who said, Get real. In Italian, of course. A multi sono immaginati repubbliche e principali. Many have dreamed up republics and principalities which have never in truth existed. The gap between how one should live and how one does live is so wide that a man who neglects what is actually done for what should be done is on the way to self-destruction. Machiavelli's focus on what is actually done is in tune with his times. Copernicus is studying the heavens. 
and Leonardo is dissecting cadavers, both trying to learn how God actually did it, to learn not from theory, but direct observation. Just as Leonardo was interested in anatomizing the world of nature, so Machiavelli, in a sense, was interested in anatomizing the world of politics and the world of history. But dissections and autopsies are never pretty. One of the uglier discoveries attributed to Machiavelli is the idea that the end justifies the means. Now, he didn't put it quite that way. In the actions of all men, and especially of princes, where there is no court of appeal, one judges by the result. Machiavelli is very clear that the end is what counts. He says this in a number of places, and it seems to us a very tough argument. There are some situations in which the more the survival is threatened, the narrower the margin of choice becomes, unless you say you would rather have your society destroyed than to pursue a marginal means. What would you do to prevent this from happening to your people? What would you not do? Would you lie? Violate treaties? Assassinate people? Just where would you draw the line? Anywhere? On the other hand, if you are winning a war and your enemy is all but finished, how far would you go to minimize your own casualties? Machiavelli was acquainted with the moral ambiguities of power. He was a realist. Machiavelli pursued what some scholars have called amoral realism. First of all, what he was trying to do was create something that didn't exist up to that point, uh, the nation state, in this case, Italy. But what we need to ask ourselves is whether we really are in desperate straits, whether we really are up against the hard laws of necessity that Machiavelli is describing. I think much of the time we assume we are and are not. Like politicians today, Machiavelli justifies harsh or deceitful means as necessary to the common good. But his focus is on the presence or absence of power. What is it? How do you get it? How do you keep it? Good questions in any age, but stark and immediate in Machiavelli's. <laughs> 